Oh, sorry. Just scheduling my workout with Giannis so I can learn how to carry my own team. Run it back. Starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Run It Back. I am Eddie Gonzalez. I'm stepping in for Michelle Beadle today. She's in the middle of a 16-game losing streak with the Spurs. She's traveling back with them. Of course, I'm joined by stadium insider Sham Sharania and storied Atlanta Hawks teammates Chandler Parsons and Evan Turner on the end here. How you fellas doing? Hey, you came out hot. You came out hot, Eddie. Be honest with the honest joke. <laughs> Hey, we got to hit the ground running. So we're going to get to the biggest report of the day yesterday from our own Sham Sharania. LeBron James out indefinitely with a foot injury. Shams, what can you tell us about LeBron and his foot that popped on this play? Yeah, LeBron James is expected to miss an indefinite amount of time. It will be an extended period that he will be out. I'm told likely at least two or three weeks. And guys, the interesting part here is I'm told he initially hurt that right foot in January. He was faced with the decision at that point to shut it down for an amount of time or keep playing on it. He decided because of where the Lakers were in January and they've been most of the season just scratching and clawing, trying to get into the playoffs and trying to get in the play-in picture. He decided to keep playing on it. And then we saw on Sunday, he said on, on air, he heard a pop. He somehow played through it, got back into the game. And this injury comes at a, at a devastating time, an inopportune time. There's 21 games in the Lakers season left. They've won three in a row. They're two and a half games back of sixth place. And now LeBron James is going to be out uh, an extended period of time. Anthony Davis is going to have a lot of the burden on him now. He's averaged 28 points, 16 rebounds in nine games without LeBron this season. So he's shown, and even in the last few games, he's shown that he's back to the form that we saw him earlier this year. But that's why you go and make that trade. Get D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt, uh, Rui Hachimura. Uh, they, they have the depth to at least be competitive. But this team without LeBron James, and we don't know when he's going to be back. The hope is for the Lakers and LeBron that over the next two or three weeks, that injury, uh, it, it doesn't flare up as much and, and he, it can tone down and he can try to make a return before the playoffs. But just a devastating injury at a devastating time for the Lakers. Chandler, how tough is it to come back from a foot injury, especially if you have to rush back? You're in the playoff race. You have all this pressure on you. Can, is it even reasonable for him to get back relatively soon? I mean, this this is no good. This is with a dude that size, with the way he plays at that age, how explosive he is. You see what happened with Joel Embiid, someone like that's foot. This this is no joke. And obviously, he's saying he heard it pop. Who knows what what that exactly meant? But with 21 games left, and and LeBron was saying this is the most important games of his career, and and now he goes down, and it sounds like it's going to be for quite some time, and. It's, it's a good thing that they made these moves at the deadline because they did get younger. They did get deeper. They do have a talented roster still, but let's not get it twisted. This this team is is not going to go far without LeBron James in the lineup. D'Angelo Russell has still been out. We know Anthony Davis is kind of in and out of the lineup, but th this is on him now. This is his team. This is his, his show. He's got to absolutely dominate for this team to even have a chance to get into the play-in. But... This time, this stage of the season, uh, you know, especially with LeBron, the way he's played all year long, th this is a tough blow to the Lakers who did better their team, who did make that push, who did bring in a breath of fresh air with all these new guys. This is going to be a tall task, in my opinion, for them to kind of overcome. And I would, I don't, I don't know the injury. I don't, I didn't see the the scans or anything. But when you say a, 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 at least a couple of weeks with basically a month and a half left, I wouldn't be surprised if he's done for the season. Yeah, right, yeah no, I definitely agree with you, Chandler. Uh, I think at this age, at uh, at this point, the injury, the foot injury, that's a big deal. But one thing that nobody talks about is uh, they've gotten a whole new roster, but they haven't had any time to really, you know, mold and gel together. I think if Brian does come back, it's one or two games before the play-in game. And um, you have to really worry about making sure everything flows right. To play with LeBron, guys have to adjust their game. They have to get to, you know, marching how he marches. And I think he had a whole new team having a, you know, getting ready to follow his lead. And um, this is just, you know, a detrimental time. So, Evan, obviously with Anthony Davis, your, your Buckeye brother D'Lo on the way back at some point, can they stay afloat for two, three, four weeks as they, they're a half game out of the plan right now, two and a half games out of the sixth seed? Do they have enough 
to remain uh, competitive and hopefully get into the playoffs still? I think so. I think they have a, a, a decent amount of talent. I think they have size. I think they have versatility. They just have to, have to really make sure they stick together. Uh, you know, when you lose a big piece like LeBron, everybody has to step up and be accountable. And um, I think, you know, with the, if the schedule's in their favor as well, I think they can go on a little run. They're only a half game out, and just with a little bit of luck, you know, things can swing. All they have to do is make the play in, and hopefully Brian's healthy and things can change from there. Yeah, I got to be honest. Looking at the schedule, too, it's not the craziest schedule coming up. They have a lot of winnable games, and they're going to have to beat teams ahead of them to advance and to kind of move up in these in these rankings. But Portland is right above them. You best believe Damian Lillard, the way he's playing, he's going to want to get in there. New Orleans, with them finally getting healthy, B.I. back in the lineup, Minnesota, Utah. These teams, I mean, they're all just as talented and just as good as, as the Lakers right now. So they now with LeBron out, with D'Lo still out, uh, this is a really tall task, honestly, and they've dug themselves quite a hole here. And LeBron going out here is just that's just something they can't afford. All right, Shams, look, this is a LeBron James led team. This is LeBron. This is AD. This is clutch. Player movement is always the conversation here. If this season does not end well, is there a possibility that there could be some movement over the summer? Not only those two big stars, but the rest of the roster as well. I mean, they've got a, their entire roster is really in flux because they, they're, they're going to have cap space potentially. But all these guys, you think about Malik Beasley, D'Angelo Russell, um, you know, Rui Hachimura. These guys are all free agents, uh, likely free agents in the summertime. Malik Beasley has a partial guarantee. We'll see if they pick that up for next season. So there's a lot in flux there. And then when you think about Anthony Davis and LeBron James, they came to L.A. and wanted to be in L.A. to win a championship and bring multiple championships. They've already won one. And I, and I think now we'll see what happens in the play-in and the playoffs. They, they, they want to make it there. And so if they don't, what happens? How much is it a conversation with the organization about where, where it wants to go? But those guys have wanted to be in L.A., have wanted to win in L.A. I don't think that that's changed per se, but I do think that's, I mean, it's got to be a question, especially if you missed the play-in slash playoffs for two consecutive years. You know what this is? This is just more ammo for the MJ GOAT comparison of LeBron not making the playoffs. And and <laughs> this is just another – this is more ammo for them. And it, it, I don't think it changes much. I still think LeBron's a Laker next year. I think they he heals that foot. He gives them time to see what moves they do make this summer. And then he's made it very clear he wants to see where Bronny goes. And latest mock draft I just saw, they have this dude going 10th. So – who knows? I think he got he has one more year left with the Lakers. Hopefully they can kind of maximize his potential because it, it looks like LeBron's not slowing down anytime soon. They still have a lot of value there. And they do have younger assets to start the season with next next season. But it, it's not if the Lakers miss the playoff. It's when the Lakers miss the playoffs. They're going to have to start, obviously, planning for the future and next season. And what are they going to do with LeBron? And Because he's made it clear he's out in a year once, once, they, once he sees where Bronny goes. Look, five seasons in L.A. for LeBron. Missed the playoffs once. Exited in the first round once. May miss the playoffs again a second time. But he won a title. I mean, at the end of the day, LeBron can say, I brought a title to every team I played for. But, yeah, if he lips off into the sunset, we were just talking about where is his statue going to be in this arena? Is his number, which number is going to get hung up? Uh, this is a storied franchise. They're not just hanging up statues and numbers for one title be very interesting to see if he decides to opt out and, and, and ask out to somewhere else this summer. I don't even know where he could go. Everybody's talking about back to Cleveland with how great they look, but who knows? Well, from one LeBron team, though, to the other, the Miami Heat, great big win yesterday in Philly, pulled off a late game, heroics, Jimmy Butler, a huge shot, Bam Adebayo, some huge stops on Joel Embiid, James Harden missed a, a game winner, a possible game winner, looked good on TV, just back ironed it out. Chandler, what do you think about how Miami played yesterday against the Sixers? And, and what is their outlook going forward? Are they a true That's contender uh, going yeah. uh, for this playoffs? This is exactly what we talked about yesterday. When you look at the Eastern Conference and you look at Milwaukee, you look at Boston, you look at Philly, 
Miami is kind of that next team of, of, of who can actually contend in the Eastern Conference. And, and they showed why last night. They play so physical. They play great defense. They have multiple ways to hurt you. And last night, I felt like this was their game from the jump, right? They played with more energy. They were double teaming. As soon as guys cross half court, they were throwing traps. They were scrambling. Uh, they were playing defense like a college system, picking up full court. Like the intensity they were playing with, the, the Sixers didn't know what to do with it. And they were trapping Joel. They were forcing guys to, to get out of their comfort zone. Tobias Harris had a rough night. And these are the kind of games when Joel is getting doubled, when James is getting blitzed and pick and rolls. You need Tobias Harris. You need these guys. Tyrese Maxey got hot in the second half, but just seemed like every single time that the, the Sixers would cut it close, someone on Miami made a big play. Bam got a big stop or Struess hit a big three or Hero hit a big three. Um, th this is why this team is dangerous because they have that DNA. They have that culture. They have a deep roster. Uh, and Jimmy Butler played great last night. He made one of the craziest finishes I've ever seen kind of the spin up and under, and that was pretty much the game. And so this was huge for them. They went on the road to a team that we know is, is a, is a better team than them. That's an actual contender. And, and they got a huge win on the road. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Chandler. I think tone and physicality, physicality really sets uh, really sets the standard. And, uh, you know, Miami, that's their culture. And I think when it comes to playoff basketball and you include Jimmy Butler, his best can be as great as any superstar's best any given night. And when you have uh, the role players and all that experience, these guys are battle tested. You know, there's a lot of guys on that roster that made it to the finals a couple of years ago. And, you know, once again, they bought into the heat culture and they can go into a lot of different environments you know, uh, make a series very interesting. Yeah, look, they, they just brought in Kevin Love. They've, they've gotten older. And we know the Miami Heat. We know that system out there. We know Eric Spolster, Pat Riley. This is when they turn up. It's March. It's winning time now. It's time to get back to it. Kyle Lowry supposedly on his way back soon. They're starting to round into shape. And what I love last night is the way they let Bam and they let Bam just guard Joel Embiid straight up. That would help a little bit and shade a little bit afterwards as well. But th they have a championship defense on that team. They know it. They have the nucleus of that. And, and they're a team to look out for going into the playoffs. They're going to be a tough matchup for Boston, Milwaukee, and Philly. And those are the three teams we're talking about all year long out east. Shams. It wasn't about a month ago Dwayne Dedman, who is no longer there, threw a Theragun at, on the court in protest at his coach. Uh, but look, they've they've got him out. They've got Kevin Love in. They're they're ushering a, a new regime in that sense. What's the morale like out there in Miami, and what's the energy as they get forward, looking forward to the playoffs? I wonder which one of Chandler or uh, Evan would throw a Theragun in Atlanta back in the day under Lloyd Pierce. <laughs> that's a, that's a great Chandler, question. Chandler, Chandler, on Chandler would throw it and then say we. <laughs> that would mean hey, that would that would mean I was actually dressed and on the bench to have a chance to throw the Theragun. So I was using back plan dice he's, with he's the. He's usually in a suit. Yes, he's usually in a suit on the bench. Those right. black on black fits, white undershirt. Never even had my opportunity to, to get into trouble, Shams. Um, but no, Eddie. I'm, to answer your question, I think I think the Heat, the culture that they have built, they're always going to be confident as long as they have a puncher's chance in the playoffs. They feel like what they've built. They've been in the conference finals twice. They've been in the NBA finals twice in the last uh, three or four years. So th this team has clearly proven that they're battle tested. But to me, it's been interesting just to see. Jimmy Butler has been picking and choosing his spots at different points this season. You'll see him get up for the big games like last night against Philly in Philly, his former team. And he always brings it against Joel Embiid and that group. Uh, but you're starting to see kind of a changing of the guard there. Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero, those guys are getting a lot more repetition, a lot more opportunity there. And Jimmy Butler last night, 23 points, 11 rebounds, 9 assists, 4 steals, 9 field goals made. Only Luka and Nikola Jokic have put up those numbers in a game this season. So Jimmy Butler has shown he can do it. I'm curious from Chandler and Evan's perspective, you guys have been in a position where you guys are younger players looked at as, as emerging but then you've also been the others on the other side, being the older players like Kyle Lowry and Jimmy Butler, and, and you guys are trying to figure out your position and like really battling for hierarchy. What is that like for Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry right now? Well, to me, Jimmy Butler, it's, it's his team, right? He's the best player on the team. He is older. Kyle Lowry now is in a different position, right? He's now turned into a leader, a vet, a good locker room guy, and he's there to basically help Gabe Vincent. He's there to help Tyler Hero, and he's there to obviously contribute and give them stability in the playoffs. But 
this is why this team is built for the playoffs and built to win a championship because they have a little bit of everything. They have older guys, they have vets, they have youth, they have toughness, they have shooters. They can score in many different ways, but they defend, man. And they played, they didn't even play good last night. I'm watching this and I'm actually pissed because I bet on Philly last night and I'm watching this team. And, <laughs> and they, they're so tough. Nothing comes easy. Like I said, the minute the, the Sixers would make a run or Tyrese Maxey would go off for a quick five or seven points, somebody would step up. Somebody would deflect the ball and, and get in the passing lane and kind of disrupt everything that they were doing. And to not play good in Philly against this team and still find a way to win a game is is huge. And that's just the DNA. That's the culture that Pat Riley, that Spo, that everyone has there. Um, but it, it's a fine line of, of when, once you get older, man, it's different. Most guys role kind of di like diminishes a little bit, but that's when you really, you know, swallow your pride. And, and like me and Evan, we, we were in a weird situation in Atlanta where we both went to kind of a tanking rebuilding team and we never really got a chance to play. So it kind of shifted to like taking Trey young, taking cam reddish, taking these young guys under our wing and just kind of trying to show them the right things to do uh, while helping them on and off the court. So, and and if we got a chance to make the playoffs that year, maybe we got thrown into a game and we could possibly win a game for, for the Hawks, but it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a fine line of, of, of playing and then kind of being that player coach once you get older. Evan, they have 20 games left. They're two games behind the Nets, two and a half games behind the Knicks. How far can they push this? Are we talking about this is a possible five seed here? We're, how far could they go right now? No, I think so. I think this last 20 games, you see a lot of teams going to run. And uh, I think the Heat, they're definitely trying to finish off the season strong and go into the playoffs with a lot of momentum. So I think their focus on is to try to win every single game as opposed to other teams might give in to this or that. They're they're trying to win a championship. I think everything about their offseason, in between the season, deadlines and plays is to win a championship. So I think they're going to try to push it and keep climbing up the standings. And I think they can get to that fifth seat. Big minutes last night from Cody Zeller, who they signed off the street. Not often you can sign two unathletic white guys. And I'm like, hey, those are nice pickups. <laughs> but from Miami to the team that beat them in the playoffs last year, the Celtics, tough loss for the Celts in New York. The Knicks kind of just ran them off the court as they end their, their, as they end their road uh, trip. Uh, Jason Tatum ejected for the first time in his career. I was kind of surprised about that. Uh, Chandler. People were questioning whether or not this would last this season with the Knicks. Not so much anymore. Is this a good team that we're looking at? No, I mean, I, listen, I think, <laughs> I, th I think they're solid. I, I think I think they're solid. Listen, every team above them, I do think is better. If they happen to stay in this seating right. right now and it's a four or five them against Cleveland, I think they could possibly advance in their toughness. Uh, Julius Randle's had a great year. I love the signing of Josh Hart. He's kind of this guy that's doing a little bit of everything, and they basically gave up Cam Reddish, who they weren't playing anyway. So that was definitely an upgrade. Uh, Emmanuel Quigley's playing really good. Uh, and to me, the key has been Jalen Brunson. That was the biggest move for me. I've been talking about him all season long. Just the way he handles himself, he's a pure point guard. He can score. He defends. He moves the ball. He knows how to get Julius Randle his ball into spots. He knows how to get R.J. Barrett his ball into spots. He keeps everybody involved. And this, this is a dangerous team just because of the way they play, the way that they're balanced attack, the way they try and defend. But do I think they have enough to... to when it contend and, and advance, I, I don't think so. Maybe one round if they, if they get a good matchup, but uh, the, the East at the top is too stacked. Yeah, no, nah, I'm definitely a fan of this team. I'm hyped for, uh, you know, the six straight wins. I think the league and New York is even, you know, more electric when the Knicks are doing well. I think if they get the right first round matchup, I think they have enough toughness, enough defensive uh, toughness and, you know, explosive offensive power to, you know, win one series. I don't know what year they'll be contenders, but I mean, this is good energy. I think the, you know, the the energy around the Knicks organization will help bring, uh, you know, the right type of, you know, franchise players there and, uh, you know, get the ball on the roll. Shams, the two New York teams were the talk of the league all summer. Neither one actually made the big move. Neither one made the big trade. What has been the key for the Knicks turnaround this year? We, they were in a lot of turmoil. People were wondering if Thib Thibodeau was going to be their coach going forward. Everybody wanted Donovan Mitchell there. That didn't happen. They were disappointed. R.J. Barrett got his bag, and everybody was wondering, ah, should that have happened? What turned these things around and, 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 and has led into this great season for them? 
Knicks fans are going to be in your mentions. I think that they feel like Josh Hart was a major <laughs> trade. Um, and the way that he's played since he's been there over, I think, around 20 points a game. It's like everywhere he goes, he plays at a high level after he's getting traded. Uh, but I, I think for them, they they won six in a row, six and one since the trade deadline. Uh, you know, they, they ended up going out and getting a guy that I think matches with Tom Thibodeau. He's been really yearning for having another wing coming off his bench or starting for him. They, they brought in Cam Reddish last year uh, right before the deadline, traded a first-round pick for him, uh, and, and he clearly didn't pan out, didn't get any minutes under Tom Thibodeau. They burned a first-round pick to get him. They could have used that first-round pick to get Donovan Mitchell. They needed one more first. They, they didn't want to put it in. They used it on Cam Reddish, and, and now they end up trading Cam Reddish. Uh, but they're able to get Josh Hart back. And I think that you can look at as a win for this team. Tom Thibodeau having someone that he trusts is a benefit as well. And on the Celtics side, Jason Tatum, I, I, I got the stat. He scored, uh, on, he's had four games of under 20 points in February so far. He only had four in the first, you know, October, November, December, January of four, four, the first four months of the season. So uh, Tatum's kind of hit a little bit of a lull here. But for the Knicks, I'm sure they're pumped right now. And I'm sure they're going to be in your DMs. You know, trying to trying to come back at you. For, uh, <laughs> Aren't they always the though? Aren't they always? Evan, the, the current matchup for the Knicks right now is the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're two and a half games out of them for the four seed. If they climb up, if they get the four seed, they get home court advantage. Who you like in that series? Very interesting matchup between those two teams. What do what do you see happening there? Man, I, I'm usually a big fan of guard play. Um, I mean, I'm torn right now, but. I, Obviously, I think the Cavaliers have great guard play. You know, Donovan Mitchell, I'm a big, uh, you know, Darius Garland fan. But it's a game of runs, and Knicks are on a great run. And um, I'm kind of rooting for the Knicks because when they when they had that home split with the Atlanta Hawks, the whole city went crazy. So I kind of want to see how they would go if they won, actually won a playoff series. Yeah, I think that, that it'd be cooler for the NBA, and I think the league is better when the Knicks are better and they're advancing and, and the garden's rocking and, and everyone's there. But I think this series would go six or seven games. I think the, the edge would go to Cleveland. I think their youth, their guards, like like Evan just said, E.T. and, and, and I mean, uh, Donovan Mitchell and, and Darius Garland, they're tough to control with their – and then they have the bigs down low. Uh, I, I like Cleveland this series, but this is definitely – I think both teams are looking at it like this is who we want first round. So it's going to be interesting. I'm with you, Chandler. I think this is the best matchup for both teams. They want to avoid that big three atop the standings. So they want to stay in four or five best they can. I love the theater of Donovan Mitchell going back to New York, his hometown, play against the team that everybody thought was going to get him. And, and who knows what happens. But I think Darius Garland is the key there. And he could he's played as well as any point guard this season, really. He's been incredible. It's kind of shocking he didn't make the all-star team. So seeing him in that series, matching up with Jalen Brunson, you you got to figure they'd guard each other just off size alone. It would be very interesting to watch how he does in that setting. But we'll see. I mean, I, I think that is the match that we're going to get, hopefully, and, and, and we'll see what happens. But from the Knicks side to the Celtics side, tough loss for them. They ended a, a quick road trip. Uh, overtime win against the Pacers. Buzzer beater against the, against the Sixers. Uh, Chandler, are you reading anything into this loss? Like like Sean's mentioned, been a rough month for, for JT. Now, he did get a new shoe. He did win, he did win All-Star Game MVP. But in the games that count, a little shaky here and there. Anything to read in here, or is it just the dog days of March for this team? Listen, they, Jalen Brown was out. There wasn't. They weren't at full strength. They they're just coming off All Star break. It, it, is it worrisome? No. They're, I mean, they've had some losses for whatever reason. They can't beat the Orlando Magic. Like they've had some inconsistent losses, but for the most part, they've been the best team in the Eastern Conference all year long. Until Bucks have went on this crazy tear now, but again, it's there's 20, 21 games left. This is when you start watching the standings, right? This is when you start looking at everybody, how everyone else is playing. And you see a team like Miami, that's the seventh seed. That, if I'm in the tour and I'm tied right now with Milwaukee, I'm doing everything I can to get that one seed, to play in Atlanta, to play a Toronto, to play a Washington, someone like that. Because I do not want to play Miami first round uh, if they're going to stay in the seventh seed. And obviously a lot of stuff can happen here. And I still think the Celtics are a very good team. They're deep. They also defend. And if you look, everybody we're talking about, these teams are good. They they have stars and they can score the ball, but they also defend. And, 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 and the Celtics have that. They're not going to win every game. This is when they're going to watch film. They're going to flush it. They're going to get better from it and move on. But this is a team they could potentially see in the playoffs. So you definitely <laughs> want to handle and you want to take care of business. But I don't think there's really anything to look here. Tatum's frustrated. Jalen Brown's out. I, I look to them to kind of get back on track. Soon. 
Yeah, I agree. I agree with uh, Chandler. Obviously, you know, the Celtics, they, they fell on some tough times, but at the same time, they're a very dominant team. They're very uh, gifted, very versatile, and um, they have two of the best players in the game that play both sides of the ball. And uh, when you have a guy that can go get 50 damn near every other week, you'll take four, you know, sub-20 games. I mean, give him a break. He just had 52 in uh, the All-Star game. Just dropped a new shoe. He's been doing marketing, commercials. The dude is tired of being a superstar. So once uh, once February ends, I think March will be something special. And, uh, you know, Tatum, he, he has a lot of experience. He's going to show up for the playoffs, 100%. Yeah, I agree, Evan. I shot JT a text last night. He was kind of laughed off the ejection. But, yeah, I mean, he's been on the road for a few weeks now. And he did everything at All-Star. He was the All-Star MVP. And then you know how All-Star goes. They immediately go on the road, a quick vacation. And then they're on the road with the team. So those guys look a little sluggish, in my opinion. Same thing for Jalen Brown. Even their coach coached the All-Star game. So I think they're happy to get back to Boston as soon as they can and get back to their season and kind of get ready for their stretch run here. But – yeah, from the top of the standings to the bottom of the standings, the Pistons and Hornets, randomly notable game last night. LaMelo Ball balled out. He hit my parlay, hit six threes, so I appreciate that. But then he left the game with a tough injury. It's tough to see. Non-contact, fractured his ankle. Shams, what can you tell us about LaMelo and his injury and, and what's looking like the end of his season? Yeah, I mean, this clearly threatens his season. I'm told he's going to get more evaluations on it, but there's no doubt. I mean, internally with the Hornets, I, I don't think there's an expectation that he's going to be back this year, but he, we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that. But guys, three ankle turns this year. He had a grade two ankle sprain in preseason on his left ankle. He aggravated it twice after that. He's missed a you know, good amount of the season. And then last night, non-contact, he fractures his other ankle, his right ankle. So it's been a brutal year for LaMelo Ball. It's been a brutal year for the Hornets. When you look across the roster with injuries, Terry Rozier's missed time. Gordon Hayward's missed time. LaMelo Ball's missed time. Dennis Smith has missed time. That's four guys that are playing key rotation roles, all missing significant points of this season. And then Miles Bridges, on top of all that, hasn't played a game this season. Doesn't look like he's going to play a game this season. So... Uh, this team has been been beat up, and clearly they're pay, they're playing for for lottery balls at this point um, more than anything. Uh, seven and twenty without Lamelo Ball this year this is just the type of season that has been for them. Yeah, look, you wouldn't notice looking at the standings, but they've won five straight games. This has been such a weird season with Lamelo's injuries, with just all of their turmoil with the Miles Bridges situation, Chandler. Is there any positives to take away from this season? Like, w the couple of games they were healthy, they looked decent. This was a playoff team last year. W what, do you, what do you get out of this season if you look back on it, if you're the Hornets? The number one pick and that big old French dude <laughs> that, that could change their team. I think, honestly, <laughs> shutting down the mellow ball for the rest of the season is a blessing in disguise because, obviously, this kid's young. You don't want it to be a substantial injury where he's at surgery and he's on the shelf for quite some time, but – this is a classic. He rolled his ankle, rolled his ankle. He overcompensated. And now the and now the other ankle goes. And I think this is the best case scenario for the Horgan, the Hornets organization. They shut him down. They do not sign Miles Bridges if they thought about bringing him the last couple of years. And they literally try and lose every game possible for the rest of the season. And the only thing that would make this a little bit better is if they get the number one pick or number two pick because they need to add talent to this team. And they do have a solid roster, but going into the season, they knew they weren't going to compete. They knew they weren't going to contend. And now the, the worst thing they can do is, is go on a five, six, seven game win streak at the end of the season when pointless wins just to further, just to worsen your chances uh, to get Victor. So I, I think that's the best case for them. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, you have to, you know, really count your losses and remember, you know, what, what you do have. So last year you had LaMelo Ball, one of the youngest all-stars ever. You know, unfortunately you had a couple, you know, injuries, but you're able to build talent up and, you know, go draft around, you know, a 20 or 21-year-old kid. And, you know, in the next two or three years with the talent that he has and the possible, you know, opportunity to get Big Vic, I mean, that could take you to the next level. I mean, that, that type of energy – to bring a lot of free agents and and the peer town alone to put put your franchise in the right position for the next decade. Yeah, tough season for MJ's team. Tough season for the Ball Brothers. Let's get those guys healthy, get them back mm -hmm. on the court next year. But hey, that's 
That's how the cookie crumbles. But up next, Shams has the scoop on the new collective bargaining agreement, plus some of the craziest posters of the week, and that man has a family. Run it back, be right back. Welcome back to Run It Back. Shams, we're starting with you here, man. The, the CBA deadline for the NBA is at the end of March. They've extended it a few times. And you, th this is how you make the big bucks. You got news here. What's going on with the NBA in, this, in the CBA right now? Yeah, th there's been progress in, in their negotiations. There's an urgency to get a deal done. At some point in March, there's a March 31 deadline, like you just said. And there's been three pillars of these negotiations and where this really stands. The first is they're negotiating a new tax bracket and expanding the lower tiers. We've talked a lot about you know, the, the higher end spenders like the Clippers and the Nets and the Warriors. Uh, and it'll continue to be more punitive, but I think finding a way to expand and increase the lower end of the, the tax brackets to allow teams to at least dip into the tax without those crazy penalties, I think that would open up even more, a little bit more spending. The second thing is draft age eligibility going down to 18 years old, so that would effectively end the one-and-done rule. I'm told there's momentum on it. The one pushback is that the NBPA is trying to make sure that vets aren't eliminated and those jobs aren't going away from the vets. So, you know, whether it's a condition, an exception that makes sure that the veteran players have to be on teams with high schoolers that come into the NBA. And the third thing, and that this is something that Evan and Chandler will, will appreciate, is contract extension limits right now are at 120 percent. Uh, the league and the PA are discussing elevating that to 140 or 150 percent. So players like Jalen Brown, OG Ananubi, um, guys like that that are extension eligible, they'll be able to extend for a little bit more than they're able to right now. So I'm curious, you guys, you guys played. What's your thoughts on those three different factors uh, that the league and the union are working on right now? I wish they did that in, 2000, in 2014 and 2017 <laughs> when we got our big bags. <laughs> I'd still be under contract right now. I'm just milking them dry. <laughs> Well, E.T. Uh, got the cap to spike, you know? He, he, he got the cap to spike in the exact right Hey, let me year. tell you something, Sean. Breaking news. I got E.T. paid when he got his contract because I messed up <laughs> the whole market that summer, and I got the 96 ball, and then sure enough, next tweet, boom, Evan Turner gets the bag from Portland once I went to Memphis. Yeah, and I was like, Evan damn. Turner, Kent Chandler, Bazemore, this Luol much Dane, better Joe Kim Noah, Chandler yeah, Parsons. Exactly. That was I opened up the floodgates for these cats. Look at us. <laughs> Look at you guys now. I love it. Yeah. Also, yeah, I, I, do, I do like the I do like the 18 and uh year one too, mm -hmm. because as many times as kids prematurely go to the draft and they don't make it, there's been the flip side too, where I grew I go I grew up playing with this kid Vernon Macklin. ET probably remembers him. Yeah. They called it big ticket. He was supposed to be the next they Kevin did. Garnett. And they changed the rule before his he was draft eligible that you have to be one year removed. He goes to Georgetown. He gets hurt. He doesn't play well. He transfers. He actually transfers to Florida. He comes and plays with me, prolongs his career, never really makes the NBA. And if he was able to go to the NBA as an 18-year-old, his family is set for life, and he, signed, he gets you know 10 to 15, whatever it is, to be a lottery pick, guaranteed money. So I think if a kid's ready to play right now, if, if Bronny James or a Victor, if these kids are 17, 18 years old and they're draft eligible – why make him go play overseas? Why make him go play in the G League? Like, I love that rule. I think it's selfish to not let a kid to stunt his growth, to not let him just go hoop and, and fulfill his dreams as soon as he can. Yeah, I agree. I agree, too. I think uh, we have a lot of prodigies. We have a lot of great young talent here. And uh, you even look at Scoot Henderson. He's a man already amongst boys. And I think sometimes just wasting that one year does nothing for anybody but the university. And when you break it down for the other sports, baseball, you know, all those other sports, this they don't have like an age restriction. So, you know, let them hoop, let them ball. Yeah, I love it. I'm with you guys there. And, and let the, let's get the kids on the court, especially if there's safeguards and keep the vets there on the team as well. I think that was the mistake we made in the early 2000s. And we just ended up with not enough vets and too many young guys. But Shams. I know there's a TV deal on the way, too. So there's a lot going on. It's imperative for them to get this done now. And shout out to the guys that said all oh, the trade demands would lead to a strike or, or I guess not. But Shams, thank you, as always, for being here and, and for, the, for the news. And you have a great one. And now we're moving on to that man has a family because it's time to see some dunks, some blocks, some insane plays. This is my favorite play of the weekend since the All-Star break. This is like MVP stuff, right? right? I don't know what Ja was thinking, but 
Yeah, Joel Embiid, Joel Embiid humbled him a little bit. What do you guys think of this one? He tried to, he tried to get him with two hands, too. Huh. <laughs> and who's that? PJ tried to take a charge at the same time there. This is, Jaw was doomed from jump here. Yeah. What did, what did he say? Jump with Jaw if you want to go viral? <laughs> right. I was going to say that. <laughs> Joel uh, said, yep, let's go viral. Let's do it. <laughs> I guess he's not That's wrong. Tough. He's still going viral. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. At that point in the game, too, that's tough. That's, whew. He, he, had no, he had no clue Joel was coming, though. I got to love this. Trademark stuff. Kyrie, LeBron, future Kyrie's teammates gotta, maybe Kyrie's in some gotta city. Know better. Kyrie's got to know better when you're playing against this man. He plots and he slow steps to get to this block. Oh, my God, man. It Brian, remember back in the day he was doing it 10 or 12 years ago? It was like three times a game. He was just chasing it down, <laughs> knocking into the sky. Like, I'm glad. This is this is amazing. You know what's crazy? It's like, I don't you remember don't somebody him. doing this all the time before him. It's like he invented the chase down block, but I know it happened before him. Right. Whew. Pascal on his head. No push. That's, that's tough. <laughs> this that's is tough. Crazy. You blame his teammate? You blame? And he finished. Man, it's just tough luck because, uh, you know, Pascal Siakam isn't the best ball handler and you got dropped by him. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's – shout out to Pascal, but it's like, come on, man. The Iverson joint for him? No way. Yeah. And I'm so bad at Killian Hayes not wrapping him up here and letting him actually put a little cherry on top with <laughs> him. <laughs> yeah, I'm cussing out Burke. I'm standing up and cussing him out. Look what you did to me. Hey, but look, he got his revenge. Back. Bro, bro, everybody dumps on Jake Fertle. Like, Why is that, ridiculous. Evan? I think it's because he's white. <laughs> 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 <I'm just laughs> Why do you think, Chandler? This man tried. He, he he tried to like block it with two. He was confused. Do I go vertical? Do I try and block this dude? And it just ended, it ended poorly. <laughs> man, but this is actually That's a good disgusting. game, surprisingly. And he was pissed from just getting his ankle broke at the other end. True. It goes another Ooh. white guy getting dunked on. Yeah. This, this is this is racist at this point. Yeah. Next clip, please. This <laughs> Black History Month. Let's get it. Let's get it. Dennis Smith, Dennis Smith has he's had the he had the craziest mixtape. Remember his mixtape too? He had yeah. crazy bunnies. I remember seeing him in high yeah, school been, and like not to be bad. I was just like, bro, he's gonna tear ACL because he just jumps too high, right. bro. He was like jumping out him in seventh woods. I don't know what was going on. Seventh Woods. He's been doing this forever, but I'm with you. Like knees aren't meant to do this, but he keeps doing it. That was. <laughs> and who we got here? Ah, Mr. Seventy One. Ah. Oof. Yeah, this. Whoa, dude, at that he, point in the game. It just makes sense. I mean, yeah, he had everything going for him. There's no way he yeah. wasn't gonna push this. Yeah, he was already at 60. I appreciate Jabari Smith still trying to stop him after, like, the 60th point in, like, 20, 22 minutes. But, yeah, you might want to let this go. Barry probably feels real athletic, and then this dude does that to him at 32 or whatever yeah. it is. 19-year-old yeah. getting banged on. He had a season full of highlights in one game, bro. bro yeah, that's... How do you even score? The way he's been scoring... It's like he's been playing public school basketball. This is the best league in the world. And he's scoring at like a crazy level. And then and like these 13 games don't e don't even equal Kobe's 13 game tear, which is even the craziest thing on earth. This man, this Insane. is just, this man's pulling from half court. He's sidestepping. He's bang. He's doing everything. Yeah, he's insane. He's been a, he's I, I been a monster. And and efficient. He's, been a he's, so efficient. he's scoring 70 on 30 shots. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, up up next, guys. Katie hasn't spoken to Kyrie since the trades, and Ben Simmons, former teammate, has a lot to say about Big Ben. But that's next on Running Back. Did Mac McClung bring the dunk contest back? He's been like your adversary all weekend. Yeah, like a lot of people think I was hating on Mac McClung. I don't think you were hating when I was more I was so hating. pointing out, but the the NBA had to go get Mac McClung <laughs> to revive the like uh, Mac. I was not. <laughs> It was more so a shot at the NBA, more so than you. I'm sorry you caught a stray. You felt like you caught a stray, but we we way. actually said you said Mac is going to put on a show, and I said he's out. Mac, come on. 
Evan, much like you, I talked to a Warriors Finals MVP for a living, my other job. Uh, what, do you, what do you guys think about the Mac McClung drama? Uh, I, I thought he took a shot. I'm just saying. I thought Kevin took a shot. But what do you guys think? <laughs> I, I guess one thing that everybody was just struggling with is, like, uh, Mac McClung's not in the NBA. Like, you know what I'm saying? There was tons of people in the past that we for sure wanted to see dunk. Like, remember DJ Stevens from Memphis? Yeah. Like that type of stuff. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I think Matt McClellan make made us all put our foot in our mouths because he legit was the highlight of the weekend, even, I guess, the All-Star game included. He literally showed up and showed out. And even though I knew he could do a lot of those dunks, I was still sitting back like, damn, he, he turned up four dunks, first attempt. Shout out to the Whites. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, the fact that, the fact that he didn't miss any was the most impressive thing to me. And again, like Evan just said, bro, he's not in the NBA. So well, KD, myself, I said the same thing. I'm not hating. He's just not an NBA player. And even the other guys aren't really good NBA players. And I think fans and guys want to see, they want to see the stars perform. I want to see John Morant. I want to see Zion. I want to see Zach Levine. I want to see guys like that, that, you know, my wife has heard of, or like my kids know, you know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> part of the thrill for all-star weekend. And with that being said, yeah, like Mac McClung, we, he's a viral sensation. This is what he does. He was born to be in this NBA dunk contest. And like Evan said, the NBA was aware of that. And they went and found this man knowing none of the good players are going to do it. So I see both sides, but that was the frustration was, even like next year, are we going to let him back in the NBA even if he's not on a G League team? Let's say he's playing in like Europe or China. Are we going to fly him in for the weekend to let him do the dunk contest? Because I got some, because I got, I told him, and I said, I got some homies in Orlando that are, are bouncy that I can, like, I can, I can apply for them. And like, I can, I'll back them. So, like, I, when does it stop? Now, some other dude that had like DJ Stephens or Stevens, that kid was crazy balanced, right? I think he would beat Mac McClung in a dunk contest. So, why yeah. don't we get there next year? I know a couple crackheads yeah. that'll do it too. Jump high, high <laughs> as the sky. High as the sky. Right. You know what I mean? It's the NBA <laughs> yeah, dunk yeah. contest, bro. It's not. It's 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 not the and one street. It's not anything. It's it's there's got to be a player in the NBA, bro. Yeah, and I think what makes it that, worse sometimes it kind of isolates the skill of the game. So like when you, when you add up, you bring Matt McClung in. It's like you, you see the game going into threes and only threes, and the casual fan just thinks all you need to do now is just hit a three and it's over. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now when you do Matt McClung, all you need is one trick pony or a dunk or to be viral, and that's an NBA player. And yeah. and when it's coming to a lot of casual fans and our sport is spreading so much, some of the moves that we're making, much like the low management stuff, you have to be very sensitive because there's a lot of people in this world that just don't know they're going to go off what anybody says or what tells them. You know what I mean? Also, I wish you would just yeah, go Simon that... Charlotte. Simon Charlotte, now that LaMelo is out, so he can actually play. He's on the Sixers where he's never going to play <laughs> either. Play. So sign on one of these bummy teams where he can actually get minutes and show people he can play and deserves to be here. And the jerseys are going to sell, too. Opens, so, like, get your money out. Right. Definitely opens up a can of worms. But, look, obviously we had to talk about the elephant in the room when we sat down with et cetera as well. So here's Kevin on Kyrie and where they stand after, after everything that went down. That part of it, because I love to play. That's all I'm focused on in this league is hooping. You know, not that other shit. What Kyle doing behind the scenes, what his contract negotiations was. Like, I don't even want to think about none of that stuff. So whatever he is doing, that's him. And I trust that he's going to make the right moves for him and his family to move forward. Like, I don't – and I trust in him on that. And I, we haven't had a conversation, but eventually we will. A lot of stuff is moving fast. He figuring out his situation in Dallas. And I'm figuring out my situation here. But, yeah, at some point, I'm sure we'll have a conversation and kick back and reflect on all of it. But – it's like after the initially I was like, all right, it is what it is. And I try to move forward. Chandler, Evan, you guys have both been moved. You've been traded. Evan's been traded in season. Chandler off season. You've had teammates traded in the season. Chandler, is this typical? Is it just like, yo, he's out. Take him out the team group chat and make a new group chat. It's we're moving on. Or like, what, what do you think of this? <laughs> You definitely take him out of the team group chat because I don't want to be on that anymore <laughs> talking about I'm, I'm not there anymore. But depending <laughs> on your relationship with the person, like when I left Houston, I was super cool with James Harden and with Dwight Howard. And when I left to Houston and I went to Dallas, 
I didn't speak to them. I didn't have like a conversation of why or what. I'm sure they just understood I did what's best for myself, my family, my career at that time. And then, yeah, when I saw them when I played the Rockets, it was all cool. And we went to dinner the night before. I saw them this summer. We were still friends and kind of maintained that relationship. But I don't think there's anything to read into it that they didn't have a discussion. I think they're going to kick it in L.A. in this offseason and everything will be absolutely fine. That's usually how it goes. Unless there's some sort of underlying beef or issues that you had with someone in the past or something, then it's like, whatever, I don't, like we're done, we broke up. Something like this, Katie and Kyrie, they're friends, they're cool, they're going to see each other, and it's going to all be back how it was, in my opinion. Yeah, I would definitely hope so. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, I know for sure they kind of made a decision to kind of, you know, play with each other, you know, a few years back. And I know for sure a lot of media thread coming around was how excited they were to work with each other. So uh, I'm not reading too deep into it because I don't, you know, too much really care. But, <laughs> you know, at the same time, I, I think they'll figure it out when they're, they're ready to figure it out. And, you know, a lot of static occurred from that, that situation alone. So I think everybody needs to take a step back and breathe. But they'll be smooth. It's not as crazy as when, you know, KD left the Warriors and he had the Draymond beef and all that stuff. All right, from... Two former Nets All-Stars to a current Net. Ben Simmons, he still had at least one more game with knee soreness. But his former teammate, George Niang, he had a lot to say about his experience with Ben in Philly. So take a listen to this. And, yeah, let's hear what you guys think. Because this is, this is a lot. This is a lot. What is the difference between this year's team at this point and last year's team because last year's team just had gotten James Harden. I was going to say, I got a lot to say about last year. You're five wins. By the way, you're five wins ahead. We are? Last year's pace. So this is where you're sitting at. You're yeah. five, well, five well wins Ben, ben Simmons kind of hand, handicapped us at the beginning of last oh, year. Oh, there yeah. I mean, oh, well, I wasn't going to say it, but now, now, now you know what I mean? Now you're playing Let to the go. crowd. He's on now you're really go. playing yeah. to the crowd. Well, stop clapping. Let him go. Exactly. True Philadelphia. Spill the tea. We love that. See, now, now this to me is different. This, there clearly is some sort of disconnect or beef here with, with Niang and Ben Simmons. And the, the whole media, it's almost like beating a dead horse at this point with Ben Simmons, right? He's not the player he was. We don't know if he'll ever be the player he, he was again. But this, again, this is a relationship where it's he's kind of been dragged in the media. He's been shit on pretty much all season long. This to me is a little unnecessary. It's like at this point, that whole drama, that whole like that's it's over with. It's in the past. Um, Georgie Niang is also he's not really like a, a, a star type player to be able to kind of say these things. But clearly, again, there is some beef here. There's some issues. You can see them getting into this now. And this is just a lead up of when they were in the locker room together. Who knows what happened or who knows if they're cool or not. But you can I can tell by this comment, by this interview, like he wanted to kind of air it out a little bit. He wanted to people know that there's beef and it's clear. Listen, Ben Simmons, everything it's already been, you know, scrutinized in the media. This is nothing new. Yeah. Usually I would I think last year you sit right there. I, I understand George's like, frustration because at the end of the day in a locker room, no matter what occurs with the coach or front office, you want to be accountable and make sure your teammate, you know, your teammates there has your back. I think a lot of times last year, certain players felt like Ben rightfully so chose himself first and just quit on a team. And what you didn't see from that clip, George was like, okay, now you have to make up for a franchise guy. Role players that make $2 million have to make up for the talent that a franchise guy has. And regardless of which, I, Georgie works hard and he does everything he's supposed to do. I know he's not on an all-star level, but eventually somebody has to tell, you know, the talent that Ben is to man the hell up and legit just be, you know what I mean? Be the leader of the team. You get everything else you want. You get all the baddest women. You get a hundred <laughs> bajillion dollars. You, you're, fresh prince of, you're fresh prince of Philly. They can parry LeBron like legit. Now show up when it's time to show up. That's literally all they're asking you to do is to be a franchise and lead the team. And coming which from he, a locker which, room. Yeah, which he didn't. So obviously this is why he's pissed off. And like, it's, there was yeah. just no effort, it felt like. Uh, no effort, oh, but at the same oh, time, like, uh, oh, go, go, Eddie, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, look, lots of drama in Brooklyn. But look, we, guys, we got to get to a break. After this, we're going to talk our parlay. Evan, I'm sorry. We're probably going to lose the parlay. <laughs> Coming back, we'll run it back in a second. 
Fellas, we had so much to say about Ben in the NBA dunk contest. I'm just going to run through the parlay real quick. I like it, which probably means we're going to fail. Evan, your pick is the best. I, I don't know how Chandler is going with the Clippers here, but hey, whatever win, works Eddie, for Chan. They have to win. Evan, thanks so much for being here today. Michelle will be back tomorrow in the big chair. I'll be over there, and we'll see you guys tomorrow on Running Back.